thank you. Karen Carney, aren't you glad we talked beforehand about Manchester City needed to find goals from elsewhere? <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Um, we spoke at the start of the show, as you mentioned, just Bonnie Shaw probably in over-reliance on her in terms of goals and needing more people to chip in. Well, they absolutely came to the party today and delivered and six fantastic goals as well. And the manager will be delighted and giving Chloe Kelly a, a hug there. It was player of the match undoubtedly a great performance I think two goals and assist and um, yeah it looks absolutely ecstatic and rightly so it was a really good performance we'll hear from Chloe Kelly in just a bit Kelly Smith on on the goals situation for West Ham I mean they didn't let them go did they they always looked a threat they did they looked a, th a threat on the counter-attack especially um, just that lack of clinical finishing in, in, the, in and around the area but Man City, you know, had four different goal scorers today, which was good because Bunny Shaw has been, Man City have been very reliant on her um, pretty much all season. So as we said before, you know, four different scorers popping up, um, which, which they need because if this player goes down injured, you need other players to pop up um, and, and keep them in this title race. This is a big win for them today. This is 17 get home games now unbeaten. This place is a fortress for them and they're going to need that in the remaining part of the season. I wonder when it changes and switches from actually being in the title race and, and contenders to everyone saying, yeah, it's definitely going to be Man City, because they've still got that belief, Karen. Yeah, they do, um, and the manager does, but I'm sure we'll ask some of the players and him and it'll be one game at a time. Yeah. They love that, all they do, but to be fair, if I was You're in their shoes, on that, I'd, I'd do the same, though, if I was in their shoes, so I'm not criticising. But look, they're in a great position. They needed the result at, at the start of the whistle, and they've absolutely got that and put themselves where they can, it's still, um, you know, Man United is still leading the way and obviously Chelsea and Arsenal have got games as well in hand, so um, they're doing all they can and, and literally game by game they're trying to stay in control of what they can. Reading, Liverpool, Manchester United and Everton to come for Manchester City as they look to not just make those European places but challenge at the top. Confirmation then of the results from this weekend. We have three of the bottom four in action today and actually didn't go any of their way apart from a a point for Spurs against Aston Villa, but all three of those sides were ahead at one point, but no three points. Manchester City with a 6-2 win over West Ham. And that's a result that moves Manchester City up to second in the table tonight. A reminder, it's the top three that go into Europe. Arsenal sitting outside of those Champions League positions at the moment. But big games to come between all those sides to decide it yet. Yeah, tight as you like in the bottom four too. Plenty coming up across Sky Sports. City's Esme Morgan's on Inside the WSL this week from 6.30 with Jess in the Women's Championship show. We saw Bristol City promoted to the WSL today. Reaction on Thursday. Arsenal, Leicester, we're back on Friday the 5th of May with Super League action. Coronation weekend, Sunday, May the 7th. Uh, Chelsea looking to be crowned champions, of course, up against Everton. Watch the Chevron Championship day four at the moment. That's on Sky Sports Mix at the moment. And Dreamland, based in Margate, secrets, lies, loves of a family of four sisters. Well worth a look, that one. All episodes on Sky Atlantic. A couple of comedies of errors tonight. More drama, though, from the WSL. Eight goals in it. 60 football from Manchester City as they go second. Mistake. And she's straight in there, and it's a brilliant goal. Going through the middle here again, it's Kelly! Oh, breathtaking! Two goals in a minute! Good night for Chloe Kelly and Manchester City. A couple of goals and assists for her in a 6-2 win over West Ham. Just look at the number of shots from Manchester City. Just 10 on target, though. Just the 10. Uh, to four of West Ham. The possession dominating as well. Manchester City and that result going up to second. I said, what a night for Chloe Kelly. Delighted to say she joins myself, Kelly Smith and Karen Carney, live on Sky Sports. Chloe, congratulations. Hope you can hear us all right. How was that for you? How important was that result? Thank you very much. Yeah, it was a great result for us and scoring goals, that's what we want to do. We want to get our goal difference up and we did that. We just did just that tonight. Chloe, hi, it's Kelly. Uh, were you searching for that hat-trick tonight? To me, it seemed like you were trying everything in your being to try and get that third goal. 
Yeah, thank you very much. <laughs> I think it was just, yeah, uh, I was confident in front of goal, so I try my luck as much as I can and, yeah, just try try be a pest for them and do all I can for the team. Chloe, I, n I noticed with um, both of your goals, you took the shots very, very early. Was that something that you recognised in the build-up to the week or something you've been working on? Because they were both outside the box, really, especially your second one. Yeah, I think the first one, the goalkeeper's position, I think she made up my mind to take it early. She was off her line a bit. So, And then the second one, um, I seen that the keeper weren't really set, so I just hit it early first time and low because uh, we've been working on that. You won't see me looking across at Karen and Kelly then, but they were effervescing about you throughout this match, just about how rapid you were, the, the directness of your play too. What sort of level do you think you are in, in your career? I've heard you describe it as being some of the best form of your career. Yeah, but I've got so much to learn. I'm excited for the future, how much I can learn. And I'm doing just that, playing with such great players and also a great manager who I'm learning a lot from. So I think I just am hungry to learn more and keep trying to provide a lot for the team. More to learn, Karen. Well, that's what I was just about to ask, Chloe. If there's what more do you really want to work on? Anything specific for you that you think could maybe take you to that another level that you're probably you're talking about? Yeah, I think my positioning in the box is really important. I think as a forward, you want to be in the right position at the right time, and sometimes I'm just off that, and I can be a little bit better. Um, but yeah, we're working on that in training, and I think just being more clinical in and around the box. And Gaz said to me tonight, I, I did more of that. So yeah, uh, pleased with the performance, but I'm hungry to learn. Chloe, thank you for, for coming on tonight. We're going to talk to your gaffer in just a bit, so we'll ask him about that as well. Thank you for coming on, and good luck thank for the rest you. of the season. Thank you very much. Cheers, Chloe. Uh, what you won't have seen before that as well, before we were about to talk to her, she put the headphones on, it was really loud, and her, her face looked like she had just scored that, that hat-trick. Love the calmness, the composure from Chloe Kelly. We saw that again tonight. Yeah, we did. And, you know, just from that interview there, she's a player that wants to learn, wants to develop. She's still quite young, um, and she's hungry to learn. Um, she has got to add goals to her game we spoke about this I think that's the first goal in six games two goals today so yeah obviously we're, she, Man City are very reliant on Buddy Shaw and we spoke about that I think that's Shaw's um, 17th goal now but they need more from Chloe Kelly from mm. Lauren Hemp a couple of other players Fowler stepped up today um, but yeah she's a player that I really really like watching she's she's pacey she can take players on 1v1 she took those shots really early today and you just see her here with the press she read the press it's a poor mistake by Sissoko and that's what she was talking about. She saw the keeper there, Arnold, off, her, off the line. And she just thought, do you know what? I'm probably going to hit this. Um, good connection on the ball. But what a mistake here, you know. Just takes her eye off it, sees the press coming in. But what I like about that is she noticed that the keeper was off her line and just thought, I'm going to go for it because the keeper's not set, not ready. And it was a great start for Man City because, you know, two early goals, I think, within, what, 60 seconds of each other. Um, and this one here, she kind of knows where the defender is and lets it run across her. But again, a nice early shot and the power that she generates is quite impressive here to get it across goal. Um, a nice, cool, calm finish outside the box and that set Manchester City on their way, really. A couple of goals, the assist as well that she was talking about, just wanting to get a bit more from her game. Yeah, look, set pieces are so vital in the modern, modern game. and. She's got a great delivery, in swingers, out swingers. Um, really impressed. I mean, the defending shocking, no question about it. Have it in higher areas, in higher territory, away from your own defensive third. We'll score so. more than you. Well, if we have to, we have to. But look, we, you know, she's a European Championship winner. She's a young player, but she's not shy of stepping away from from big moments. And uh, we've seen that. And fingers crossed, this summer she can deliver more. But um, it's great that she's hungry because you have to be hungry to win competitions. Well, she talked to us about Gaz. We will hear from Gareth Taylor next. The performance Taylor made for the title for the Manchester City boss. If you are watching us on Showcase, you're about to leave us. But stick with us then for more analysis from a 6-2 win from Manchester City. Manchester City have put six past West Ham to go second in the WSL tonight. What a race for the title and Europe we have on our hands. And Gareth Taylor, the Manchester City boss, joins us live on Sky Sports. Gareth, congratulations on tonight. I know you're going to tell us it's one game at a time, but in the significance of the season, how key was tonight? 
Yeah, all of the games are so important between now and the end of the season. And, uh, you know, there's no margin for error. I've always said this. So we had five games before tonight. I had to make sure that we, we won every one of those. Um, and whatever happens elsewhere happens. But we have to take care of our own business and uh, concentrate on the, on the two home games that we have. Um, we've taken care of this one. We've managed to get a bit of goal difference on the board. Uh, improvement. So uh, I'm looking forward to next week's game. Yeah, we kind of wondered if you had us on beforehand because that was Karen Carney's point, wasn't it, Karen, before the match, just about yeah. this goal difference. Bonny Shaw has been obviously in magnificent form with, I think, 17 goals in the double side now. Was it a concern to you or was you saying to your squad, we need more goals from other areas, other players as well, to get that goals for a get, uh, up? Yeah, I think um, we, we review where we were where we were last season at this stage, how many goals we scored last season, which I think was 60. Um, before tonight's game, we were on 35. So, and half of those have come from Bunny, like you say. Um, so we don't want to put too much pressure on the players. And we know that we are the most creative team in the league. We create the best chances. Mm. But our, our um, execution of them is, is not great, if you look at that part as well. So just talking more with the players about composure all the way from the back in our build-up play all the way through to the top end of the pitch. You need composure um, because if we show more of that, we'll score more goals. Yeah, and Steph Horton was obviously on the score sheet again. Well, not again, but it's her birthday today. How impressed have you been with, with her and her mentality? Obviously, she's had her injuries and she's been in, in and out of the squad. Um, but she's keeping the conversation going about potentially getting called up to Ser into Serena's squad now with Leah Williamson being out. Do you think she's done enough to get that call? Uh, that's not for me to say. I mean, look, we're, we're happy to have Steph. She does really well for us as a, as a player on and off the pitch. Um, yeah, this period I've spoken previously and said, you know, I think she's probably playing some of her best football that we've seen. She's, uh, you know, she's got bags of experience and she brings a calm and influence to the team. But yeah, I think that's, that's up to Serena. I think... Um, you know, she'll have her own ideas, she'll have her own plans in place. If that includes Steph, great. If it doesn't, nothing changes from our perspective. In this title race, I think you said it would be visually pleasing to be second tonight, you know, with the other teams around you not, not playing. Will it shift the mentality on those other teams, do you think? Does this heat the pressure on them? I don't know. I just think it looks better. It looks better for us, obviously. <laughs> it looks better for us going second. What other people think is, is up to them. I mean, it's always... Uh, it's, a, it's such a difficult league. It's so tight, the margins, 22 games. Um, you know, you drop a point here or there and it can be like really detrimental to your, to your bid. So, um, yeah, the run that we've been on has been really impressive. I think um, the football we played, uh, I was impressed with a lot of things we did tonight. We had some moments where we were a little bit loose and a little bit off it in our pressing that allowed us to uh, allow West Ham to gain a bit more ground on us. But, yeah, I think overall... The, the win at this stage of the season is super important. It looks good. It looks healthy. Um, we have another opportunity next week. Mm. So, yeah, I think it's um, psychologically, I'm not too sure, but I think it's good for us. And we spoke about it before the game. We go second tonight. And uh, regardless of what help else happens elsewhere, we keep doing what we need to do. And what does it do for you personally, Gareth? A month ago, you were saying that your contract was dragging more than you'd liked. Where are you at it now? Um, yeah, I, look, I think um, when there's news, uh, you guys will probably be the first to know about it. We've been in conversation for a long time, and I've always said that I love it here. I love working with the girls. I think we're doing something. I think there's something special brewing here. I think um, I'm always a bit of a bigger picture thinking kind of person where, you know, for me, it's about, OK, we've had a lot of changes. We know that. We've we changed the, uh, the average age of the group a hell of a lot from the beginning of... Uh, the season with the players that left the players that came in we we had to give time to the players that came in which you don't get time in the WSL you have no pre-season mm. so I think we're starting to see now some really good things and I like the look of the the team I like the look of uh, the where we where I think we can be in the next two or three seasons and and obviously I'd, I'd like to be a part of that I think uh, and, I, and I think the club want me to be a part of it so yeah, things are, things are good. I'm pretty comfortable with it. The club are, the club are happy, so um, I'm sure there'll be some news soon. Looking forward to it. Gareth, thank you for coming on and well done tonight. Thanks very much. Cheers, guys. Gareth Taylor joining us live. Can probably still hear us, but I mean, he seems like it's not weighing on him, the fact that he's, he's not signed that contract yet. 
No, and he said, I'm sure we'll hear some news or we'll be the first to know, so we'll look forward to that. But the, the thing I, I really um, liked about that is he mentioned the transition of his squad. And I think at, maybe last at the end of last season, I was like, I felt City could go on and win the league this season if they kept their squad. Mm. And they ripped it all up. Mm. And they, you know, they got a lot of transition, players went out and players went in. And... He's actually right in that aspect that they've probably got the advantage for next season, the season after. Chelsea have got to reinvent themselves, I think. You know, Arsenal have got to figure out with the injuries. This squad now, is got, I think it's the third youngest in the WSL. They've been through that transition period. So maybe they've gone, look, we want to see the future. We see this squad now, this young group. And with our manager, this is where we need to go. So I had a lot of question marks at the start of the season because I was like, I couldn't understand why they did it. But they obviously, we as wrong? I said... To question at that start? For me, at the time, when you had the players that they had, if they'd have added a couple more and kept that, they probably, I would think they would be winning it this season, but they want to win it for two or three, four seasons, so they felt maybe rip it up now and we'll go again, and that's what they've done. And I think maybe other teams have got to do that, so they might have that advantage, not this season, but the seasons to come. Given that then, are you impressed with where they are, given all that they had to change and do? Yeah, I mean, they changed the whole midfield, didn't they? They lost Lucy Bronze, Jill Scott retired, Ellen retired, um, Caroline Weir left, and you just sit scratching your head thinking, what's going on here? Like, mm. where is the plan? But now we're seeing it in second, playing some really good attacking football, um, always on the front foot. Um, you've got a, a, one of the best strikers in Bunny Shaw that's been prolific this season, um, getting goals. Third in when it comes to the win ratios in the WSL as well, despite all those changes. Yeah, I mean, he's, he's done a really good job. And I was like Kaz, I was thinking, how are they going to handle this, losing so many players? But he's embedded his own ideas, his system, and you can, they have their identity. You see how they want to play, um, you know, getting the ball wide, getting the crosses in for sure. It's very effective. Um, you know, those early losses at the beginning of the season, you just thought, how are they going to come back from this? But they, they, they're, they're at the business end of the season now and they look really good. No, I was just going to say, I, I'm, gonna, I'm really intrigued to next season because we did at the start of the show the synergies between the men's and women's team in terms of how they play. And obviously we've seen with the men's team now, they play with a back three and a, a centre-back going into midfield, like a John Stones role. I'd be really intrigued to see how the women's team evolves with those kind of tactical, because um, they do copy certain things. It's a one club type of philosophy. So I'll be really intrigued. He's got this group, a young group, how they start to put those different patterns of play in. And I'm actually really excited tactically for them to see how they set up next season. You asked him about Steph Horton, says it was not for, for him <laughs> to say. We'll talk about her in just a moment. Birthday bonanza for her in terms of goal. One player that's already in that England squad is Laura Coombs. We saw her get a, a goal today. Have you been impressed in uh, shifting her this season, getting those minutes for Manchester City and, and responding with an England call-up? Yeah, I mean, she's you know she's got a lot of starts this season and she's popping up with goals like this one. Uh, doesn't normally score too many with her head, but she's a very simple player, Laura Coombs. You know, she plays within her, her limits. She's not going to do all this fancy trickery stuff like you see from Chloe Kelly or Lauren Hemp. You know, she plays what she sees. Um, and, you know, Serena's seen that. She's very a basic player, um, give and goes, likes to run off the shoulder and stuff. So, mm. yeah, I think, you know, she's in, in good form. And Gareth Taylor certainly believes in her by playing her every game. And when we talk about Leah Williamson being missing and maybe that, that leadership and experience, she's 32, Steph Horton's 35th birthday today. For, for her as well, isn't that a reason to, to bring her in? Not just that relationship with Alex Greenwood, but that experience that, that she offers, being there to competitions, that experience maybe lacking with Ellen White not there, Jill Scott Steph, not there. Steph Horton. Um, yeah, I mean, Serena Vegan's always said the door's open for, for her. She's never closed it. You see the injuries that are in there. She's playing really, really well, Steph Horton. The last five or six games, playing very, very well. She's a possession-based player, which su suits Serena Vegan's style. She plays next to Alex Greenwood. So I'm sure they'll be looking at her. Morgan, Esme played right back today. Esme Morgan played against Sam Kerr and it probably wasn't Esme's strongest performances. Then you're going to have to try maybe a Lucy Parker, who I don't think has played for England yet, only had one camp coming in. So you're looking at some real young players that don't have that experience. So it's a problem. Um, but Serena Vigman is the best manager in the world for me in women's football. She'll figure it out, but as you said, timing and mm. maybe sometimes with, with things that happen, unfortunately, mm. other doors open up and it's maybe is a chance for Steph Horton to get back in, but that is down to the manager.
you can see what the goal meant to her today. Yeah, we know it's her birthday, but she said, uh, she was talking to Sam Warburton recently in a podcast saying she's not over what happened with the Euros and not getting that, that call up. Can she do any more? Well, no, she can't. <clears throat> Excuse me. You know, she's, she's playing well, um, you know, and, and she's keeping her name. We keep talking about her and this goal, you know, at the back post, you know, her name will be on the score sheet and um, Serena would have watched this game and seen it. And yeah, it's, it's Serena's call, isn't it? At the end of the day, she knows her squad inside and out and what she lo she's looking for as a manager in a centre back. Um, it's a big call for her to make. And, you know, if the fans were running it, maybe we'd be sentimental and say, Steph Horton, go on, have it. So get that closure that you want. But is the element of what she can supply missing still for um, England? Sorry. Is the element of what Steph Horton can supply missing for England? Um, the one thing, when Millie Bright wasn't there, I very much worried about the kind of the leadership role in there. Mm. And I think you have that with Steph Horton. Um, but the main thing is for me, she's a possession-based player. Steph likes to keep the ball and keep it moving, and that is what Serena Wiegmann wants. She has a big diagonal ball, which again, when Millie Bright wasn't there, you, rec you saw that weakness potentially against Australia. So look, she's doing what she can, what will be will be, and you know, some people get closure, some people don't, and, and that's really, really difficult. But all Steph Horton can do is keep playing well, keep playing well for City, and just see what happened because that's the only thing she can control is her performances for City week in, week out. Yeah, it was a classy performance in the end for Manchester City. Not without fault. West Ham kept coming back at them, got the two goals in the 6-2 defeat. Let's hear from their manager, Paul Koncheski with Lindsay. Paul, we spoke before the game and you said that you were going to be aggressive and we knew there was going to be a risk associated with that. How did you feel it played out? I think... Um... We gave them two sloppy goals. I think uh, once you come here and give them a goal, it's always going to be a mountain to climb, but giving them two, the first two, I think, is not good enough. I think we, we created some good chances and we, we had some good spells in the, in the first half, but giving two goals away early is, is always going to be a mountain to climb. Chloe Kelly was in inspired form in the sense that she wasn't hesitating. She was decisive, instinctive. And those two goals in a minute, like you say, probably put your backs against the wall. But then Snurler got a goal back in and you must have thought, well, we carry on like this. Yeah, um, like you say, Chloe Kelly, is her instincts as a centre forward is put them in the back of the goal. So there's always going to be hard to, to come back. But when Emma, Emma uh, puts one in the back of the net, then there's always hope. But when you can see another one, um, just before half time, it, it's always going to be tough to come back out and, and get the girls to go again. Even though there isn't as much at stake, and we did discuss that, is it concerning to you the run of form that you're in, especially because you'll be looking at new signings for the summer, attracting new players? Yeah, of course. Um, like I said before Christmas, I thought we, we was excellent and we picked up probably the most points the club's ever had uh, up until Christmas. It, it's been an uphill struggle since. Um, so we need, we need to start getting points on the board and we've got four games to go. There's 12 points to pay for and we need to get as many as we can. What have you said to the girls afterwards? Obviously they're disappointed. Um, we have to look at ourselves and, and go back to the drawing board on Tuesday. There's four games to go. We need to pick as many points up in, in the 12 points as we can. And Manchester City, just to get your take, do they look like they're going to be in the top three to you? It's tough. It's going to be tough, but they've got some excellent players and the people they bring off the bench as well, is, is a, they've got an excellent squad. So uh, the way they've played today, I can, I can see them pushing really hard uh, against, with Arsenal and Chelsea and, and United. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Cheers. Brighton, Chelsea, Leicester and Spurs to come for West Ham. The only team without a win in 2023, Kelly and Karen. <laughs> Not good enough, is it? No, it's not. And they're leaking goals defensively. They look a bit shaky. So Soko again, you know, today with that mistake. And when you can see two early goals in a game like that, it does knock your confidence. Yes, they got one back. But when you're up against very good players like Kemp, um, sorry, Hemp and Chloe Kelly, you have to be good defensively. And I don't think they were. They tore them apart down the flanks. Mm. The crossing ability of Manchester City today was very good, and that's what hurt West Ham. But they just, for me, leaked too many goals and are not creating enough um, in, in, the, in the attack in third. And, it, and it's hurting them because the early points that they picked up at the start of the season has, has helped them, but their form has been shocking since, since Christmas. How much of this comes down to the fact, you know, maybe not 
big enough squad, the, the resources at West Ham. Is this just what we should expect of West Ham season on season or should they be doing better? Well, if, you, if we expect that, Paul Koncheski might as well just go. You know, he's a former professional footballer. You know, he knows what elite is, he knows what elite looks like and, you know, he's disappointed with that. He's also a defender, so conceding six, that will hurt him and that will hurt the players on the journey back home and if it doesn't, then probably need to have a look at themselves, but they're a good group and they get it. But yeah, they need a bigger squad. Yes, they need more investment. Um, you know, that eighth in the table, you know, that, isn't, that isn't good enough um, for them. But well, they finished six, was it six last year? They just need to, for me, they, like we said, they started off really, really well. The, the break really disrupted the momentum and they've completely run out of steam and that's because of energy, confidence and everything. Can you like fighting for it? Maybe it was too good. Maybe they were like, well, we're safe. We're not going to go and win it. So we're in this kind of position that we're in. But he's a manager that's been in professional football. Like I said, he knows how to, how to get to elite and I'm sure he'll be going to the board saying, look, I want more. What's the point? We do not want to finish eighth. We want to keep kicking on. We want a bit of Europe. That's what, how good it is, and um, I think he'll be going back to them asking for more, and rightly so. All right, let's shine a light on goals then, because there is one scoring a fair few at the moment. Bunny Shaw, but is she a sure thing for the Golden Boot? just the race for the title that's very interesting in the WSL but it's the race for the golden boot in pole position at the moment Bunny Shaw another goal for her today her 17th of the season Karen Carney Kelly Smith knows a thing or two about scoring goals um, she's two ahead of Rachel Daly who got two goals today having been there and done that do you look at Bunny Shaw and think she's going to go on and take it well in the form that she is right now and got another goal today um, her hold up play is excellent uh, her link up play she gets goals, was it 90% of the goal, her goals in the box? Um, yeah, I mean, City are in great form. What, Villa now fifth, I think. So, but Rachel Daly's hungry for it too, isn't she? You know, she's scoring week in, week out. So it's going to be close between those two. But I think Bunny Shaw's going to edge it. Tell me about Bunny Shaw, Karen Carney. I just mm -hmm. really like this clip, to be honest. Um, it just sums up everything about Manchester City. Um, I'm just going to play it on if it plays it's a uh, anyway she plays in slow motion there we go that's why it's me that's in control and probably why it went kaput there so apologies for this here i'm going to highlight it now maximum width well there's your two two wide players in hemp and kelly bunny shores we mentioned center she's going to go in between the two center backs there's the two number tens from manchester City. there's the five the golden five that go and attack and we're just going to play it on slowly even in this in a minute you'll see here now even Kasper Eye comes into play. But as I mentioned earlier, when it's in this build-up phase, mm. you see for the players that are looking for the bounce pass, Hasegawa has been absolutely brilliant, keeps it going. And what Manchester City do is they work it into the wide areas. But I just want to slow it down and keep there. I mentioned earlier at the start of the show that when it goes into wide areas, Bunny Shaw doesn't even look interested because once she knows it goes into those areas, her job is to come away from it and get herself into the penalty area. Now this little bit here, again, typical of Manchester City. It's a four, it's known as a rondo. And what they want to do, similarly you see in the men's game again, we're speaking about the synergies between the men's and the women's team. What do they do? They always want to work it into these areas here, down that side. You see it very a lot with the men's team and the women's team is no different. We'll just play it on now. See Bunny Shaw again, getting straight into that area. Where is it? Staying away from it, on the back shoulder, never getting too tight to any defenders. I must say it's a brilliant run from Casper. It's just so well. I'm just going to pause it to make it. I'm just going to take it back ever so slightly. See just the movement away there from Bunny Shaw. And then she just darts in front. Again, brilliant from the right back to get there. Uses her strength then. Uses it to roll the defender on a turn. It's something we mentioned to Chloe Kelly. They just took their shots really early today. Mm. And it's a brilliant finish. But it just shows everything about the five that they attack with. The lend pass if they're in the build-up phase. In the wide areas, Shaw then gets into the box. And they work it well and it's just a brilliant goal just the strength just to roll know where the defender is it's a brilliant it's goal hard, it's harder to defense that isn't it when you've got that strength just to turn and hold her off absolutely and just the build-up play you mentioned that they're probably um, their xg's are higher than what they're scoring 
Um, but just the style of play is really, really good. And again, you, you're constantly seeing synergies between the men's and women's team and Bonnie Shaw and the Harland effect as well. Let's have a little look then at that race for the, the golden boot. Bunny Shaw standing on top of it with 17 goals. Rachel Daly in there as well. Russo, Manchester United top of the table. <coughs> this is something that, that we've heard about United several times is that they have a number of different players that can mm. score them goals and that might actually be potentially what wins them the title. Yeah, mm. again, we, we spoke about it earlier that for the last two seasons, if you want to be in the top three, you have to score 60 goals. Um, and Manchester United, I think, were on 45 last season. So where do you get those rest of those goals to get to 60? And when we interviewed Mark Skinner, he wanted different strikers, different attacking players that gave solutions to different problems throughout games. If it was a deep block, um, high pressing team, whatever it might be, they have ways in which to break them down and get from 45 to 60. And I think they have. And you can see the difference this season with a different type of goal scorers and attacking players that he's brought in for them. Too with that, they've got the, the bench players coming on. Garcia has an impact most mm. games that she comes on. Rachel Williams yeah, has yeah. been scoring late goals um, when teams are tired. You know, she's she's good at chasing and hounding down defenders, good in, from set pieces. So he's, he's been very clever on his recruitment and getting that different level of striker, different, they offer different things um, when in big moments in games. Sort of that blow your mind emoji that we're not talking about Sam Kerr, mm -hmm. you're looking at the, at the race of the top two. Well, again, probably there for Chelsea, you haven't seen the goals from last season. And again, I'll go back to that 60 goals, no Frank Kirby, no Penilla Harder. You know, we're putting a lot of emphasis on Lauren James there, Mahazy is for a young player coming in and effectively her first season at Chelsea. And again, the over-reliance on Sam Kerr. So, they need to up their goals. They can't be reliant on her this season either. We didn't ask Gareth Taylor about it, but for Manchester United and Manchester City, actually not having these two Champions League semi-finals that we see <laughs> Chelsea and now Arsenal in, with the injuries that Arsenal have mm. had, how that could then impact them in this, this final four or five matches towards the end of the season. Arsenal, again, another injury. The first time we've spoken about it uh, since we saw Leah Williamson going out. I mean, just another, where you just think another body blow for Arsenal. Yeah, it's quite frightening. <laughs> um, obviously, Kim Little's out for the season now. Um, we've lost Leo Williamson, two big key players that are one of the first down on the team sheet. Obviously, Beth and Viv, um, early part of the season too. So when B Beth and Viv are out, you think, how are, how are Arsenal going to cope? They, they, they struggled for a little bit. They, they found solutions. I think Steena is, is back in form now. Um, obviously, a goal today in the Champions League with the 2-2 draw at Wolfsburg. Katie McCabe has really upped her game. Mm. I like that. Leo Volti, again, outstanding today. So they have to find solutions now with, the, with Leah and Kim out. Um, but Palova has been amazing. The young player um, mm. that's come in, she's really, you know, playing beyond her years, really, in that attacking position. So they are finding ways to score goals, but it's been extremely hard for them, like it has for Chelsea, with these really um, career, not career, sorry, season ending injuries for them. Yeah, the impact it then has on the rest of the squad too. Good that you mentioned Chelsea. These number of games that both those sides have, if we look at the, the race for the title now, mentioned it about Manchester City not having to have those European or the FA Cup as much as they want to be involved in that. But looking at, at the run in, Karen, you can say, well, Chelsea have got it all in their hands, but throw Arsenal in there. It's not just about the title, it's the race for Europe. None of these teams are going to let up, are they? No. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you see both Chelsea and Arsenal in that Champions League. That's something Manchester City and Manchester United desperately want. Massive clubs there, and it's great for us because there's only three, only three spots and there's four fantastic teams there that are going after it. But I just think for Chelsea and Arsenal, the Champions League at this current moment is mm. a distraction. The games are adding up, whereas Man, U Man United and Man City, you know, focusing just on those situations. Man United are in the FA Cup final as well against Chelsea. But it's tough, and, and like we mentioned, Chelsea and Arsenal just accumulated so many injuries because of this, I think. Um, so that's something that the other two teams have is that they can rest, recover and go again and, and fight for those, you know, fight for that spot, really. Fight for the top four, the fight to stay in the league as well. Chelsea got to play away at Reading that last game of the season. And we've already talked about in this show, Reading are in all sorts of bother mm. when it comes to not being relegated. Yeah, Reading have got a real hard run in. Um, and, you know, like they... We're 2-0 up today at home. You expect to see that, that game out, um, but then concede three goals. Um, I think it was one just before half-time. Um, and then, yeah, go on and lose the game. And you think you're at home. Um, 
against the team, potentially Everton in and amongst it, that you should beat. And they failed to pick up the three points, but their running is really, really tough. And, you know, Leicester are at the bottom and have been for a big chunk of the season. But I can see Leicester getting out of that and Reading dropping in the, the way that they are, they're not finishing off games. Leicester and Brighton playing final game of the season as well. Incredible, incredible. We do know one thing for sure next season is that Bristol City hmm. will be back in the league. 4-0 win over Charlton today takes them up. Uh, your old mate Anita Asante involved in the coaching at Bristol City too. This was at Ashton Gate in front of a, a record crowd. They look well equipped to come up to the WSL. Yeah, they do. And Anita's done a fantastic job there defensively. They're, they've only conceded 10 goals this season. So you can see the impact that she's... There she is just in that picture there. The impact that she's had in giving her international experience and the qualities that she is as a young aspiring coach but I think Lauren Smith has done really well she brought Rachel Furness in who we know was uh, with was with Liverpool she's an experienced player uh, that dropped down a division but now will be playing back in the WSL so they haven't been in the league for a couple of seasons but they've recruited well um, they've stabilized the club and back in the league. So right to talk about Rachel Furness. She actually got Liverpool up on that same ground last season and does it again for Bristol special City. Ground. Yeah, special <laughs> ground. Incredible stories. Right, that's what's going to happen in the WSL next season. Well, that's at least what we know for 